Africa. Let's take it to the wider uh, world of trade, where trade ministers and senior officials from 100 and 64 World Trade Organization members kicked off their 13th ministerial conference today in Abu Dhabi. The four-day meeting ending on Thursday this week is focused on WTO reform, dispute resolution mechanism, e-commerce, trade and environment, among other challenging issues. Uh, let's listen now to Dr. Ngozi okonjo Wiala, the WTO Director General, as she opens the conference. Here at MC13, the WTO is welcoming its first new members in almost eight years, Timor-Leste and Comoros. We celebrate the hard work they have put in and the beneficial but challenging reforms they have implemented at home. Both countries are least developed countries, and we are excited to see them reap the gains of membership as they become new members of the WTO. 22 more countries are seeking to follow in their footsteps. Many of them are present here as observers, including a sizable contingent from the Arab world. The opportunities they see in WTO membership and their commitment to the demanding accession process stand as an answer to anyone who questions the value that the WTO provides. Comoros and Timor-Leste will bring the top WTO to 166 members, and we look forward to adding to that number in the years ahead. Some additional good news is that the number of acceptances of the Fisheries Subsidies Agreement will reach 70 this week. Several ministers have brought their legal instruments with them to Abu Dhabi, and we will be celebrating them later today. MC13 has helped drive forward ratifications. With the 70 we'll have this week, we'll now have 40 members to go, so that the countdown towards entry into force can start now in earnest. Those members yet to ratify, I have a list of you. You know who you are. I hope you can work fast to help us allow entry into force by my birthday on the 13th of June of this year, which will also mark two years since MC12. When we succeed, it will be the fastest entry into force of any WTO agreement, and I know we will. Excellencies, when we met in Geneva for MC12 almost two years ago now, my message to you was blunt. In keeping with my promise to bring a new pair of eyes and ears to the WTO, I told you what I was seeing and hearing from political and business leaders around the world, that the WTO needed to produce results, but expectations were very low that members could agree to anything. But you defied those expectations and beat the odds. You showed leadership. You invested political capital and you bridged gaps. You worked together to make MC12 a resounding success. Members delivered what was dubbed the miracle on Lake Geneva. 10 consensus multilateral outcomes with tangible benefits for people and the planet and launched a comprehensive process of institutional reform. Members sent a powerful signal that the WTO can respond to contemporary challenges and that in a world marked by strategic competition, we could also have strategic cooperation in pursuit of shared goals. Success is changing the tone about the WTO, both outside and within it. Yes, we will always have our naysayers and detractors, but there's no doubt that members have shown that we can deliver where members roll up their sleeves and muster the requisite political will. During the last several weeks, the atmosphere in our preparatory discussions in Geneva has been more constructive and conducive than it was in the run-up to MC12. And I thank ambassadors, ministers, and delegates for that. But as you can see from the documents sent to you, there's still a considerable amount of work to do. Ministers will have to roll up their sleeves once more to complete the work left over from Geneva. Whilst many of you empowered your ambassadors to make the necessary trade-offs during negotiations in Geneva, some of you did not. Hence, the important amount of work left for you to do. 
So our challenge this week is to prove that we can still deliver and demonstrate that MC12 wasn't a one-off miracle on Lake Geneva. We need to convert improved atmospherics into concrete results. We need to show the world that not only does the WTO underpin over three quarters of global goods trade, it is also a forum where members deliver new benefits for people through trade. Let's not pretend that any of this will be easy. If we thought the world looked tough in mid-2022 mid when we were slowly emerging from the pandemic and the war in Ukraine had shaken food and energy security, we are, we are in an even tougher place today. Looking around, uncertainty and instability are everywhere. Geopolitical tensions have worsened. Conflict has spread, as we see here in the Middle East, and away from the headlines across parts of Africa and the Arab world. We must not forget the conflict in Sudan, which has displaced close to 8 million, million people internally and across borders, or the conflict in the east of the Democratic Republic of Congo. Higher prices for food, energy, fertilizer, and other essentials continue to weigh on people's purchasing power, fueling political frustration. Shipping disruptions in vital waterways like the Red Sea and the Panama Canal are a new source of delays and inflationary pressure, offering a real-time reminder of the risks posed to global trade and output by security problems and the climate crisis. People everywhere are feeling anxious about the future, and this will be felt at the ballot box this year as 60-odd countries, home to nearly half of the world's population, Goes, they go, go to the polls. Economic growth has lost pace, though it held up better than expected, particularly in some major economies like the United States and India, resulting in a softer landing for the global economy than earlier anticipated. However, there are places that are falling behind. The World Bank warns that the global economy is on track for its weakest five-year performance in 30 years. In many developing countries, debt distress and high financing costs remain a drag on economic prospects. The pandemic ended a roughly 25-year-long trend during which, for the first time in centuries, poor countries began to narrow the income gap, separating them from rich ones. Several countries in Africa are already well into a lost decade and are in danger of falling, falling even, even further back. We can be proud of the fact that trade itself has been resilient in recent years. Despite everything we have been through, global goods and services trade remain at or near record highs. International markets anchored in the rules-based global trading system have stayed broadly open, helping businesses, households, and economies adapt and adjust to one shock after the other. But it would be dangerously naive to take trade's continued resilience for granted. The global economic slowdown and wider uncertainty are already having an impact. Global merchandise trade volume growth in 2023 appears to have fallen short of the 0.8% we were projecting in October. And given all the downside risks, we may likely undershoot the 3.3% merchandise trade growth, uh, growth rate I just referred to for this year. In addition, Multilateralism is under attack. Despite the MC12 fight back, the multilateral trading system, which I term a global public good, since it was created 75 years ago, continues to be misconstrued in some quarters and undermined. Trade has become a four rather than a five letter word in some quarters. Yet, trade remains critical to delivering on so many national and global priorities, boosting growth, expanding economic opportunities, meeting the sustainable development goals, and solving collective action problems like protecting our environment or preparing for the next pandemic. Without cooperation on trade, we would move towards an increasingly fragmented world economy, and all of these priorities would become harder, costlier, and in some cases, impossible to achieve people would become more disappointed, more vulnerable, more frustrated. 
In light of these realities, we need the WTO to stand strong as it approaches its 30th anniversary. We need to keep reforming and reinvigorating the WTO so that it can deliver for trade in the years ahead, seizing the full potential of services and digital trade accelerating trade for the green transition and fostering socioeconomic inclusion. <music>